to the channel. So in today's video, we are gonna hop back on the Honda Helix. We've got a couple of things we need to button up. I also need to do an oil change, and we're gonna be taking you all out for the first ride on the Helix. Now, it's not my first ride. I've been riding this thing for quite some time now that it's registered. But yeah, we got a couple of things to do, so let's go ahead and uh, show you what we're gonna do. All right, so for those who don't know, this is my 2001 Honda Helix that I picked up from Copart. It was a salvage title destined for the scrap heap. I rebuilt it. It really just needed a couple of plastics replaced and some maintenance stuff done to it. There was an issue with the clutch. We got that all sorted out, at least so far. Um, but mainly it was just body damage. So we've replaced all of the body panels on here and this is pretty much what we what we have now. Now if you saw my garage update video, I talked about having to get this thing registered uh, and this thing is registered. I have a plate on it and everything and I've put a pretty good amount of miles on it. So I don't know if you all can see that, but 3,184 miles. I got this thing with 2,384 miles or something like that. So as you can tell, uh, I need an oil change. About every 1,000 to 1,200 miles, we need to do an oil change on the Helix. So I need to go ahead and do that. But before we change the oil on the Helix, there is one more cosmetic thing that I want to take care of. This is actually something that happened in the accident, and I didn't really realize that it had happened until it was all put together. So let's go ahead and put this up on the center stand, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Can you see it? <laughs> As you can see, if you get down level, with the Helix here, uh, you see the front tire. The front tire is straight. There's nothing wrong with it, nothing bent. Everything is good on the front tire. The issue is this corner right here is sticking up. Also, you can see here, these plastics, they don't meet up. There's a gap right here, uh, and you can see it just doesn't sit right. And over on this side, it's a lot better. So uh, what is wrong with the Helix is this bracket right here. So if you'll remember in my earlier videos when I didn't have any panels on the Helix, this piece is the main kind of uh, upper body support piece. It holds the headlight, it holds the gauges, it holds the radiator right there. And you have these points, that point right there, that point, the points up top that have to be in a certain location that all the body panels connect to. So I know the frame of this thing is not tweaked, but I'm fairly confident that this bracket is part of my problem. So I went ahead and bought a brand new OEM one, and what I wanna do is I wanna swap it out with the one that's in there. So that's gonna require pulling off uh, most of the front plastics, the headlight, the windshield, uh, mirrors, and all that kind of stuff and we're gonna swap this guy out and see if it makes a difference. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take the front plastics off this Helix and we will swap out this main radiator support bracket, I guess is what you would call it. Uh, and hopefully that will fix our problem. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. she looks so far and now we're kind of inspecting that bracket on here to see if my assumption is maybe correct here is the stock bracket so it looks like that is definitely pushed in on my helix so you can see how much that sticks out that way and then when I look at it this way it looks like it is up a little bit um, but more importantly I was kind of looking here and I see this so I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but you see this tube, and this is the bottom of the bracket. This tube actually wraps around here and goes to the, the side view mirrors. But if you look at this bracket here and you look at where the tube is at, it's actually uh, touching it, right? So then if I go over here to my new bracket, here is that bracket that holds on that side view mirror, and you follow it down, and look at that gap that's between that and the metal plate. That gives me a pretty good confidence that 
more than likely replacing this is going to fix the alignment issue on the front of this helix. But yeah, so let's go ahead and just kind of get back into it and uh, we'll eventually get that bracket in here. Got it. Hell yeah. And just like that, guys, the Honda Helix is back into one bike. Now, let me show you the differences on how panel fitment is now after I've replaced that metal or that middle bracket that holds the headlight and radiator. Now, granted, this is sitting on the kickstand at the moment, so it is leaning just overall. But if you look just straight on to the Helix, you can see that the panels fit so much better. There's no side that's sticking up. Uh, everything seems to be where it needs to be, uh, which makes me feel a lot better. So panel fitment is pretty much perfect. I mean, everything is lining up really well. And I will say everything lined up so much better after I replaced that. So the real big winner here is that this gap is gone. So everything is perfect now. The Speedo sits right in between where it's supposed to be. Uh, everything is great. Now another thing that I did and I didn't really mention earlier in the video is the muffler. So as you can tell, the muffler has seen better days. Uh, this was in an accident, right? It got laid over, so the muffler is all scratched up. But functionally, it's okay. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the muffler. The biggest issue that I had with it is on D-cell, I would have this popping noise. This popping noise kind of happening every time I let go of the throttle. It would pop, 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 pop real bad. Uh, and I looked on the forums and everybody pretty much suggested that the first thing you need to do when troubleshooting this sort of an issue is to replace the graphite gasket between the muffler and the exhaust manifold. So what I did is I bought a brand new OEM exhaust gasket and I swapped it out. That's what you all saw me replace uh, right up there. Hopefully that takes care of that. We will test it out here in a little bit once we take this thing for its first spin. Pretty much the last thing we need to do before that is to do a quick oil change. So I'm going to grab all the oil supplies and I'll kind of walk you all through a quick oil change on it. It's not that hard, but it needs to be done. And I figured if, you know, we're going through all this video, I might as well kind of go step by step on how to do it for anybody who's got one. So let's go ahead and hop into the oil change. 
So first things first, I am using this GN4 four-stroke motorcycle oil from Honda. 10W40, this is what is suggested in the user manual. You know, Honda knew what they were doing when they made the Helix, and if they recommend this oil, that's the oil I'm gonna put in there. So again, there's a lot of other options out there. You be the judge of what you wanna use. I am going with what Honda recommends. Well, step number one, put your Helix up on the center stand. Step two, grab an oil pan and drain the oil from the engine. For anybody wondering, this is a 17 millimeter. Remember there is a crush washer on this drain plug, so make sure you, uh, make sure that comes off and you can reuse this a couple of times. I think I actually might have another one that I can swap out. Um, just because who knows how many times it's been used, but it looks pretty good. So I would be okay reusing this now once it gets close to the uh, End of all the oil that comes out. Let's go ahead and tip the helix a little bit So we get all of that residual oil out that's inside there. Be careful not to tip it too much <laughs> All right guys, I think that's pretty good. We just have a couple of drips left so go ahead and very easily set it back down So you don't necessarily have to do this, but I am going to take the filter screen out of here. So the Honda Helix doesn't use your ordinary oil, oil filter. It's like a little mesh screen that just keeps all the big stuff out. You don't have to change this out every oil change, but since this is the first one that I'm doing since I've owned it, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and replace the little gasket that's in there. Reason being is this is a 2001. There's a good possibility it's never been changed before and it's probably old and brittle and may crack. So I went ahead and ordered an OEM one and we'll swap that out and clean the little screen and put everything pretty much back together. You'll get a spring that comes out with the plug. Just leave it the way that it is. And then inside of there is a little filter. Let me see if I can grab it. And there is the filter screen. This one actually looks pretty good. I don't see any debris in it, but we're gonna clean it anyway. All right, so this is the gasket that I'm talking about that goes over the filter cap. Uh, that is the part number. Hopefully you can see it. Honestly, this gasket's probably good. It feels pretty good. Doesn't look like it's cracked or anything, but we're gonna replace it anyway. Clean it off real good. Again, kind of clean this guy off. Seems to be good. I don't see really any sort of debris in there. Everything looks good. A little bit of oil, but that's all. So remember how it came out. You got your filter, the big side of the spring over the filter, the smaller side into the cap, and then put it back in just like you took it out. Now this uh, Helix takes about 0.8 US quarts. I've got this little handy dandy measuring cup that I use for painting. Uh, 0.8 quartz is roughly about 27 ounces so i'm going to go ahead and pre-fill in here so i know i'm not going to overfill it and then we'll use this to fill the helix up and because i have one i'm going to go ahead and use a torque wrench this is going to be between 14 and 18 foot pounds that's what the service manual says so that's what i'm going to set it to so we're going to do 17.5 foot pounds and according to the manual this is between 13 and 16 foot pounds so we're going to do 15. here we go all right, now take your handy dandy funnel, stick her in there, and start adding the oil. Now 
Once everything has drained down, remove your little funnel. And then we're gonna measure the oil in there. Uh, with the dipstick, you just stick it in. You don't actually screw it in all the way and then read to see where it is on the lines here. Honestly, it looks like we're pretty good. Easy as that. All right, once you have all that done, there's one more thing left to do. In order to reset this little engine oil indicator, let me get a white over here for you all. All right, that's a little bit better. So in order to reset this engine oil indicator, which is red, uh, there's a little slot right here that you take your key, push down into that slot, and then this red thing will go green. All the way, there he is and it will go red within the next 1,000 to 1,200 miles. One eternity later. All right, guys, so it'd be this part of the video where I take you all out for the first ride, but what seems to be a reoccurring theme in my videos here, uh, that didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> so all the footage you all just saw on the Honda Helix was taped a couple of months ago, right before it got really cold outside, and actually did take you all for a first ride, as you all can see here. Um, but with it being my first moto vlog setup, the video was great, but for whatever reason, the audio wasn't plugged up right, and I got no audio in that video. Also, I broke my phone, which really sucked, so it probably was a good idea that the audio wasn't working because I was pretty pissed off. <laughs> so fast forward a couple months later, it's mid-January 2021. By the way, Happy New Year's, everybody. I hope your all's new year is going pretty good so far. Uh, and I'm editing this video and realize that the audio is not there. So we're gonna hold off on the first ride until the beginning of spring. It's way too cold to take the Helix out right now. But having to wait's not all bad news because that's gonna give me some time to tackle another part of this build. And for those who've been following along the past two videos, Videos, you all probably already know what it is and that modification is going to be air ride suspension now wait 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 I, I can hear some of you all screaming through the screen I know that's a pretty out there modification but let me explain myself real quick and kind of my thought process behind this air suspension setup so one big thing that you all need to remember is that this Honda Helix is a salvage title it, it is rebuilt now um, but it was a salvage scooter that I got from Copart as you all know um, and the intent was always to build a Japanese inspired helix just like the fusions you see over in Japan and one of the big modifications that the JDM guys do is they lower their helix uh, almost all the way to the ground now I drive a lowered 2003 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution it's static and I can tell you right now there are some situations where I really wish I could raise the car uh, in kind of sketchy situations with speed bumps and potholes and all that stuff but being static kind of sucks so uh, I kind of took that mentality onto the helix and I want to put it on air ride so I can drive it around aired up and then when I park it I can slam it all the way onto the frame and I know again I know some of you all are not gonna like that but hear me out I actually agree with you all the Honda Helix was built right and that's part of the reason why it lasted as long as it did so with that being said the only way that I'm gonna throw air ride suspension on this helix is if I can take it off and revert back to stock which means that I am not gonna be cutting up the frame I'm not gonna be uh, making any modifications that can't be taken off at a later time if I decide the air ride just isn't worth it if it leaves me stranded if I get fed up with it I can just swap back to the stock helix setup and enjoy the scooter as it is OEM and of course, another big reason why I want to do this is because I want to challenge myself to see if I can actually make this happen. Now in Japan, there are a lot of shops that specialize in the Honda Fusion or Helix here in the States, um, and they customize and build air ride suspensions for those scooters over there. Now here in the States, not many people have done that. I think I can really only think of about two or three people that I've seen with air ride suspension on the Helix here in the States. I'm sure there's more, but that's all I've seen. So part of this is gonna be a build process and a step-by-step how-to uh, put your Helix on air ride, which I'm super excited to do. And I think it's gonna make for a really great and interesting series. But anyway, I will get to all of that in the next video and I promise the air ride suspension video is gonna be much sooner than this video. I think it was like, geez, maybe like 
seven months <laughs> since I posted something on this Helix. So I promise I will get uh, some more content out on this bike for you all to enjoy. And of course, all my Corolla guys, the Corolla is still in the works. I'm still working on the engine bay. I will update you all when there is enough progress made to make an update worthwhile. For all of you all who have made it to the end of the video, here's a sneak peek. I have all of my different components for the air ride system. We're gonna be running a compressor, a air tank. I've gotta go through a lot of plumbing uh, and different things. And of course, here are the shocks that I'm gonna be using uh, for the rear of the Honda Helix. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all enjoy all of the footage on the Honda Helix build. If you all like this sort of content and wanna see more, please smash that thumbs up button. Also, consider pressing the subscribe button below and ticking the little bell notification to be notified when I do post videos on this project, on the Corolla, on the, there's a motorcycle back there, which I haven't really gotten to. We got a couple different scooters in here. Metropolitan, I'm still editing. Honda Hobbit back behind that, and Ooh, that one's my motorcycle, which is gonna be super fun. So stay tuned for more garage project content. And until next time, I'll see you later. Listen.